Good day, everyone. It's me, Michael Anthony Judicici, and welcome to another episode of All Things Billy, where we talk about all things Billy the Kid. And uh, we're back just one day in recorded time um, after our Paulita Maxwell episode. And uh, the reason is, uh, when I began doing some research for that, I came across Abrana Garcia and some things to do with her and her uh, status within Billy's life. And I uh, spent some time researching today and thought, hey, it's fresh in my mind. Let's talk. Let's do uh, number two in the uh, series of Billy's Gals with the lovely Abrana Garcia. And she was lovely. Now, here's the thing. You never know about these pictures, right? You just never know if it's actually the person. It's so long ago. Um, you know, the uh, provenance is sometimes weakened. But if the young lady in the um, in the, the picture that is purported to be Abrana Garcia, yeah, she's very pretty. Very pretty. Um, and uh, yeah, I could see uh, Billy uh, certainly being into her. So there's uh, there's quite a bit to unpack here because there's not much on the life of Abrana Garcia. And there's not a ton of stuff that you're going to find out and go, oh, well, yeah, that's, wow, look at that. That's interesting. That's wild. Uh, there's not a whole lot there. I'm sure she had a very full life. Uh, but as far as documenting her time with Billy the Kid, well, that's going to be a lot tougher. But the interesting part is when you start to dip into her ancestry and lineage and children and what the claims are uh, around those things, and uh, then it becomes uh, pretty wild. Uh, so much so that in order to keep track, I've had to draw myself a little timeline slash family tree based on the research I've done. I have that right here next to me. Um, and when I go over it, you're going to see some uh, interesting and uh, probably gaping holes in the story. Uh, but that's going to be up to you to decide whether they can be filled or whether they cannot. Um, so the first question is, was Abrana Garcia a sweetheart of Billy the Kid? And the answer to that is, don't know, but probably so. At least one of them. I mean, she was a young, pretty woman in Fort Sumner, you know, a town of 200 people. So it's not like she had a choice of hundreds of guys to pick from. Um, she was named as one of the possible and likely uh, recipients of uh, Billy's amorous intentions by Paulita Maxwell in her 1925 interview with Walter Burns Noble. And so I think it's very possible that she was his girlfriend. Now, the stories that you'll read will have you thinking that she was his wife. And that's where you go, whoa, hang on now. Billy was married? Well, we don't know. There's certainly no official record of any marriage, nothing whatsoever. So uh, you can put the Billy was married right on top of the pile of this will never be proven unless somebody, you know, at this point you'd falsify some document or something, but there's not going to be anything at this point that we're going to find out that would prove that, but you're also not going to disprove it. And marriages at the time, again, would have been recorded by the church. Um, or reported maybe, or recorded maybe by the clergy person who performed the wedding, um, but uh, I think we're we're probably well past where we could find that out. Certainly, Billy never, in any official capacity, whether he was uh, you know, providing testimony in court or talking to a newspaper reporter, never uh, spoke about a wife. Um, so we're we're not going to be able to go down that path. When you start looking, though at this uh, this uh, world of Abrana Garcia and Billy and children and all these things, somebody is falsifying the data. And, and I, I, I can tell who it is. You can just go online and look at the geneal genealogical sites and you can, you can tell somebody's, you know, massaging the years and those kind of things, um, trying to make everything fit. And uh, that's that's kind of sad in my uh, in my opinion, um, but hey, it didn't take long to to be able to wade through that and see, you know, what we've really got to work with here. So we're going to do that today. We're going to dive into the life of the lovely uh, Abrana Garcia of Fort Sumner, New Mexico, and we're going to tell you what things 
stand up historically and what things mm, probably don't. And we're going to do all of that <laughs> right after this. All right, we're back. So there's a couple of uh, things that you'll want to catch up on if you want to read further into this story. Uh, but the one key thing is, and I came across um, this book. I've heard about it, but never really looked too much into it until today. It's a book by Albert Garcia. Albert has since passed, I think, last year. And it's called Billy the Kid's Kid, the Hispanic Connection. You can get it on Amazon, $2.99 for the Kindle version, $20 bucks for the paperback version. Um, I have uh, reached out to some members of Albert's family to see if they'd be interested in talking about the book and what's in it. Haven't heard back yet. Um, but uh, obviously, Albert, you know, put all of his you know time and energy into this book. And when you read a little bit, you can read a little bit online where Amazon lets you look inside. Uh, this was originally for a family reunion, 1999. And uh, uh, one of uh, Elbert's cousins said, hey, can you, you know, come up with a, a story, a history of the family to tell some of the younger members when we have this family reunion? And that started Elbert digging deeper into this uh, thought um, that he and the, the, you know, members of the family had always had that they were somehow related to Billy the Kid. I have not read the entire book. I did not purchase it and buy it. Um, I might, but I've got, I got some reviews from people that I trust that said, hey, it's it's really convoluted. It's very tough to follow. There's so many names and it's not written very clearly. And it and it was not initially written, as I understand it, to be a published book. So that's that's not unusual. Um, I, in that way, it's probably much like Roy Hawes book on Brushy Bill Roberts, um, which I found hard to follow in you know quite a number of areas too, because there's so many names back and forth and misdirections that um, it becomes really challenging to stay focused on what the author is writing. That doesn't mean the information is not good. It just means it's hard to understand. So uh, might I read it? Yes, uh, but uh, I've read some reviews of it. Um, I have read some pages of it, and uh, I've read enough to glean uh, what the crux of the story is. So this, uh, the uh, the Garcia family essentially says, that uh, Billy the Kid and Abrana Garcia were married. And that in, now this is where it gets a little tricky, in some year, and I'll tell you the two uh, possibilities, um, Abrana gave birth to Jose Patrocinio Garcia, Bonnie. <laughs> uh, and they called him Pat, but Patrocinio. So when was Pat born? Well, it, it's, if you go to, uh, let me get to the right. I have so many tabs open here because I wanted to save all this stuff. So there we go. Uh, Patrocinio Garcia, birth 16 March, 1886, Fort Sumner, DeBaca County, New Mexico, USA. Died December 1964. He died the year I was born, aged 78. Burial St. Joseph Cemetery, Santa Rosa, Guadalupe County. Uh, the, a number of the Garcia family lived and lives in Santa Rosa. Well, anybody who's a student of Billy the Kid would go, wait, kid's born in 1886. Billy was killed, or he wasn't. In 1881, you can't be pregnant for five years. So it can't be him, but the family says, or at least Elbert says that, uh, let me get to the note that I had, uh, the, there was a, a, a measure to protect Pat, Patrocinio, because he was Billy the Kid's son and it was known. And to protect him from being harmed or killed, they had to make up some facts about him. So that's immediately where the, my antenna go up and go, okay, well, wait a minute. It's pretty clear. I mean, even his tombstone, if you look at the picture, says 1886. Nobody was chasing Patrocinio Garcia 
in 1964. You know, nobody was going to get revenge for uh, for him being Billy the Kid's son. So you certainly would, by that point, put your correct birthday on there. Uh, but um, hey, you know, I I I don't know. Um, but that the story is that they they created this. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say a fake identity. Um, but I want to say that uh, they that they changed some things so that he might not be known as being Billy's son. So the first thing is they make his birthday 1886. So of course he can't be Billy's son because Billy's dead or he's off as Brushy Bill Roberts or he's in Rama and Zuni as uh, 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 John Miller, right? But the birthday that shows when you dig a little deeper is 1875. That's a big leap. I mean, that's a big, even, even Albert Garcia writes that he was born in 1875. So we'll get back to that date and find out some, some things that are problematic with that. But if he's born in 1886, he's clearly too old to be Billy the Kid's son. That doesn't mean that Billy wasn't married to Abrana. It just means he couldn't be this, this kid's father. Pretty, pretty simple. I mean, just a, a matter of <laughs> biology Could, can't happen. If he was born in 1875, well, maybe he could be Billy's son. We'll have to, you know, get back to that. But Walter Burns Noble in 1926 in his epic novel, Billy the Kid, writes that Abrana Garcia bore two daughters who died very young of diphtheria. And Elbert's, Elbert Garcia's take is, we did that on purpose, well, family did that on purpose to hide patrocinio's birth. And as I said in the last episode, that makes no sense. Like this woman had two babies that were Billy the Kids, but they both died to hide the fact that she had one baby who was Billy the Kids and he was alive. I, I don't I don't understand what, what sense that makes. You've got two kids that are Billy the Kids and I want to do you harm. Good. I'm going to come to your house. Oh, here's this little boy. Who's he? Is he Billy the Kid's kid too? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's, uh, I think it's uh, uh, kind of a, an example of uh, confirmation bias. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's just a term that means when you believe something, when you're assured of something, you look up information or right. even in this case, create information that makes your belief true. And you you eschew, you, you stand away from any information that points to the fact that you might be wrong. It's rampant in our it's rampant in our, our society today. If you think Donald Trump was a great president, you look up the things that Donald Trump did that were good for the country. If you think he was a shitty president, you look at all the things he did that were terrible for the country. And that's just it. And you don't believe any of the other stuff. That's confirmation bias. And that's what happens a lot in history when people dig in and make a decision is they only open their mind to the things that confirm their decision. So, um, did, 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 can't get the words out. Did they fake the birth of two daughters to cover up the birth of one son? Well, you might say, oh, a son, you would take vengeance out, right? Isn't that uh, what God did uh, on uh, Passover when uh, he took the firstborn of uh, every Egyptian family, right? Firstborn son, not firstborn daughter. Um, well, Maybe, except for the fact that Elbert goes on to say, 140 years ago when Billy Bonnie was shot, he already had four boys and one girl, and possibly more kids, but five. Three of the boys were brought to Santa Rosa after July 14th, 1881, and they were raised, all had families, they were raised in families named Garcia, Bonnie, Gutierrez, and Senna. Uh, and so what good is it hiding one boy when there's three more according to this. So you start to see we're, we're, we're kind of inventing things. We're kind of saying, oh, here's maybe what happened to explain this thing that, you know, doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, but there's other things that don't make sense about Abrana Garcia's life. If you go online and look at some of the genealogy sites that are absolutely being doctored, you'll see that Diluvina Maxwell was born 1848. I confirm that with our, uh, well, with my friend Susan Stevenson, a genealogical expert extraordinaire. 
1848 in Canyon de Shelley. I'm not sure the way you pr pronounce that in Arizona. Um, and uh, she uh, is, as a young girl, is kidnapped. Here, I'll get you the exact. Do -do -do. Uh, she's a Navajo. Uh, Canyon de Sh I, I wonder if it's Shelley or Shay. I think Shay sounds cooler, so I'm going to say that. Arizona. Uh, Apaches raid her home, took her as a slave. Soon after, she's traded to Lucian Maxwell, father of Pete and Paul Leader, for the sum of 10 horses. So she's a young girl when she's taken away from Canyon de Chez. Except if you look at the genealogy sites, they list her as the mother of Abrana Garcia. And Abrana Garcia's birthplace as Canyon de Chez or Shelley, Arizona. Well, if that's true, then De Luvina must have had her when she was about eight years old. The, the, the uh, age range that De Luvina was captured is somewhere between seven and nine years old. So let's say eight years old, she has a Brana Garcia, her daughter, which obviously didn't happen. And so in fact, a Brana Garcia's birthday shows up as 1854, only six years older than De Levina. Now, if you go again, go back to some of these, uh, <laughs> these sites where somebody's trying to game the system and they show De Levina's birthday, they've now pushed it all the way back to 1839. They push her birthday back to 39. So it makes some sort of sense that you know, she could actually be the mother of Abrana Garcia. Well, let's look at the implications of that. Billy the Kid's married to Abrana. Uh, the, the, the word is, the rumor is that, uh, uh, that uh, De Levina is one of the ones, one of the women that's hot for Billy. Mother, daughter, Billy's doing both of them? Come on. I mean, maybe the guy's, you know, he's, I guess he can do whatever he wants, but I don't think so. And nowhere is her birth recorded as 1839. So you have forces at work that are trying to massage the data to make this seem reasonable. But let's say she is born 1839. Well, she's only there until she's eight or nine years old. So by 1847, she's been kidnapped and then she's on her way to the Maxwell shortly thereafter. So how could her daughter be born at a place that she's no longer at? And how could her daughter be born? Uh, let's see, 39 would make it 15. Uh, De Luvina would have been 15 at that point already in the Maxwell's. How could she be born in Arizona when they, the Maxwell's are the biggest landowners in New Mexico? The answer is she can't. It's bullshit. It's somebody making stuff up. So... I think it's fair to say that De Levina Maxwell was not the mother of Abrana Garcia. And if you go on some of these genealogical sites, I think you can discount that because I just don't think it's true. There's no, there's almost no way it could be true. Okay, let's move on. So it, let's say that Patrocinio, who's the hidden son of Billy the Kid, right? In other words, he's the He's the, the, the boy we have to keep alive because at all costs, people are out to get him. Well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. You're all fond of saying, oh, the entire population of Fort Sumner loved Billy. All the Mexicans loved him. He was the hero of the Mexican population in New Mexico. Well, who the hell were they hiding this kid from? I mean, Puerto de Luna, uh, uh, Anton Chico, uh, Santa Rosa, uh, Sunnyside. I, like, th these are all Hispanic settlements. What are we afraid of? Who are we hiding? And who's going to come and kill it? You know, a, 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 a six-year-old boy just because his father was Billy the Kid? That's ridiculous. You can't have it both ways. Billy was completely beloved by everybody in the territory, yet... His son was in mortal danger every moment, and we had to, you know, lie about his birthday by 11 years. You can't have it both ways. You can only have it one or the other. But anyway, so Billy the Kid is born when? Well, we don't really know. 1859 to 
1862. Drew Gomber, in our interview with him, said there's new evidence that points to the fact that Billy could be as much as two or three years younger than the 21 years we believe he was when he was killed or he wasn't. So if Patrocinio was actually born in 1875, because we know for sure he was not born in 1886, at least according to Albert Garcia, if he's born in 1875, Billy's 15, 14, or 13 years old as the father. Now, hey, a 13-year-old boy can make a baby if he has a woman that you know also has the biological ability to make a baby. So you can't say no to that, except 1875. Hang on a second. 1874, Billy's in Silver City. His mom dies. In September, now, if, if Patrocinio is born in 1875, that means that, and it's it doesn't say when, so look, we'll just shoot for the middle of the year, June, July. That means that Abrana must be pregnant with him in 1874 in the fall, right? September, October, right? Okay, so where is Billy? Well, in September of 1875, 1875, Billy's in jail in Silver City. In 1874, his mom dies, and he spends time getting into and out of trouble in, you know, a uh, 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 western, southwestern New Mexico. In 1876, Billy's at Camp Grant, Arizona, so he's gone. He hasn't gone closer to Fort Sumner. He's gone significantly farther. And he's now across the border in Arizona territory. In August of 77, he kills Windy Cahill near uh, Camp Grant, or uh, I think it was near Camp Grant. Again, Arizona. And then finally, finally, toward the end of 1877, Billy makes his way to Lincoln. When did he make the baby? Now we can uh, pull the map up here. Let's see if I can do this. And uh, I'll see if I can find Camp Grant, Arizona. If not, I know roughly where it is. Da, 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 da. No, let's, uh, let's drop a pin. And then I'll tell you how far it is. Da, da, da. All right. We'll go right there. Drop a pin. Okay, and then we'll get directions. So the directions to that Fort Sumner, New Mexico, from the pin, 457 miles. 457 miles from where Billy was throughout 1874 through, uh, you know, 18, late 1877, or at least late summer, it's almost, it's 450 miles to Fort Sumner. And he was supposed to have been there to marry Abrana Garcia and impregnate her with Patrocinio. There's no, no records of Abrana Garcia going to Camp Grant in Arizona to find her 12-year-old or 13-year-old husband. So it doesn't really fit. It doesn't make much sense. And then Billy makes his way to Lincoln, takes part in the Lincoln County War, which essentially is over, you know, in all the aftermath by September 78. And in September 78, the regulators helped Doc Skurlock and Charlie Bowdry move to Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Well, if Patrocinio was born in 1879 or 80 or 81, maybe even early 82, that might work. You might have something there. But his own family says he was born in 1875 and that Billy the Kid was the father, and I don't see how that's possible. It doesn't seem possible at all. 
because Billy wasn't anywhere near Fort Sumner based on the history, the recorded history, times he was in jail, times he was charged with crimes in the places he was during that time, unless he just ran 450 miles. I mean, I drive a lot. I drive back and forth to Texas a lot, 700 miles one way to my place there. So I, yeah, maybe he had a Nissan Titan pickup truck and he could make that trip, but I don't think so. So you've got a challenge there in believing that Billy the Kid was the father of Patrocinio Garcia. We'll talk more about that when we come back after this. And we are back. So, why would you take your son, Patrocinio, and not in 1875 when, he, when he's born, but in 1886, 11 years later, take him to Anton Chico and have him baptized and get a baptismal certificate showing that he was baptized in Anton Chico and he was born in 1886. Well, the family says it was all made up, even the baptism. That would have been done much earlier. Totally fabricated. So that's the point you can never prove. There's no, I mean, where's the baptismal certificate now? And even if you had it, is it a handwritten thing like they probably would have done back then? Well, what are you going to prove from that? So I don't think... uh, Patrocinio was, uh, Garcia was Billy the Kid's son. I don't think it's possible based on these constraints, these time constraints and parameters. But I will tell you one thing. If you look at the guy, and there is a picture of him, if you go to Amazon and you go uh, to the book, Billy the Kid's Kid, The Hispanic Connection, and you, uh, you, there's a little thing that says see inside or look inside where you can read a few pages of it. And that's, uh, you know, that's what I did. Um, and uh, you can look at, let me make sure, uh, the Kindle version is the one where there's a picture of Patrocinio. Age 29, Jose Patrocinio Garcia. And that's on page, well, it's right before the preface. <clears throat> Now, they picked a terrible picture out to uh, portray Patrick Henry McCarty Bonney, which is who they say Billy the Kid is. I, didn't, I never saw his name as Patrick. Um, and they picked one of the pictures that has definitely not been proven to be him. Um, but you can look at that. But if you look at the, the picture of Patrocinio and you take off the, you know, he's got the fedora on, he's got a suit, but you just look at the face, I look at it and go, Shoot, could be. I mean, he, you know, he he looks as much like you know a, an, an older version of Billy the Kid than anybody else does. You know, he's got kind of the same eyes. The nose is that kind of slim look there. Um, you know, he doesn't. He's got a little bit of a rounded chin. Um, I, I, you, you could look at it. You can't look at it and go, oh no, he looks nothing like Billy the Kid. I mean, he's got a similar look. But the years just don't add up. And so I'm going to have to say no. But uh, I think it's an interesting book, and I I, uh, certainly would be uh, interested in reading it. So uh, Patrocinio is buried in St. Joseph Cemetery, Santa Rosa, New Mexico. And uh, he has um, four children all have passed by 2014 um, and uh, was married twice. Was married uh, and both of his wives have passed, right? Okay. Um, Interesting that if you uh, read more about the book, Albert Garcia says, Billy the Kid was well known in Santa Rosa because he was always here. He lived in Santa Rosa up here on the hill where the Garcias have lived even before the town was started. Well, I can't dispute that, although I don't 
I've never read that Billy had a permanent home kind of anywhere. I mean, he lived with the Yerbys for a while and Charlie and Manuela Bowdry while Charlie was the foreman of the ranch. But I mean, it would stand to reason that he had to have some place to go to call home. And if you wanted to be in the proximity of Fort Sumner, but not be there, Santa Rosa is not a bad choice. Santa Rosa uh, as in a, is about four, I think it's 42, 44 miles. Once you get off I-20 heading south, I-20, I-40 heading south and arrive in Santa Rosa, you pass Sumner Lake and you pass not a whole lot else. It's pretty remote country out there. Um, so I think it's 44 miles, but to get from Santa Rosa proper up on the hill. And, and the hill is where if you drive through Santa Rosa on a, a, a I 40, now there's the McDonald's you can see from the freeway and you can see the, the gas station and, and those kind of things. Well, it's another three or four miles out to where you turn South. And then once you get to Fort Sumner, it's at least another five to seven miles, maybe eight until you get to, to uh, where old Fort Sumner is. So it is a solid 50 to 55 mile trip, but these guys could cover distance like that. So I can't, cer I certainly can't say that Billy did not live in Santa Rosa because it puts him near Puerto de Luna and Tanchico, uh, Las Vegas, uh, Fort Sumner. So that part of it at least could be, uh, could certainly be legit. Did he have a house? Which house is it? Did that house have an attic? Is that letter that Wallace rewrote but sent to the kid offering him exemption from prosecution? Is it in the attic in a house in Santa Rosa where Billy the kid used to live? Well, I hope one of the Garcia family is uh, is uh, listening and can <laughs> can help. I mean, there could be some unfound treasure there. That would be awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, Father Pat Garcia, his tombstone, 1886 to 1964. Just doesn't make sense that if the secret is out, the, I mean, in 1964, we're 80 years past any trouble that this kid would have. 80 years. 80 years. Why not give him his rightful birthday? Did anybody notice that at the age of 78, he actually was 89? Like there's a big difference between a 78 and an 89 year old. Didn't anybody catch that? Yeah. So I think Patrocinio was born in 1886 to Abrana Garcia, but not to Billy Bonnie. Abrana Garcia, according to these genealogical sites. I could just couldn't find much on her. Dies May 23, 1932 in Fort Sumner and is buried Fort Sumner, DeBaca County, New Mexico. I don't know that I've ever seen her grave in the cemetery. Um, I could not find a listing of it on find a grave. There is a more modern cemetery in Fort Sumner that would have been, uh, you know, available by that point. So she could have been buried there if she's even buried in Fort Sumner, and if she even died in 1932. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that makes your, I love these dun dun, they should have that music, bum bum bum. Paulita Maxwell in 1925 says, well, Billy could have been attached to one of a few women, including Abrana Garcia, Celsa Gutierrez, who she ultimately implicates. And uh, I forget who the third one was. Why didn't Walter Burns Noble just drive up the block to Abrana Garcia's house and say, hey, wait a minute. You had two kids that died with Billy the Kid. You have a son who's still alive now. Where's he? Like, who's his father? What's going on here? This sounds fishy. What the heck? Why, why did that not happen? If she is alive in 1925, and at 1925, according to this, she would be uh, 70, uh, she's 70 years old. Certainly have enough wherewithal to answer his questions. Certainly could go to talk to Abrana Garcia, Walter Burns Noble could, and say, hey, I just talked to Paulita Maxwell, and she said you were one of the Billy the Kid's sweethearts, and she wasn't. 
And Abrana Garcia might have said, sweethearts, she's my husband. Or how dare she? Or whatever. But you can't find a lot of information on Abrana Garcia. You've got one picture, no real birth date. The the uh, you know the birthplace is not correct. I'm certain of that. So she's kind of a mystery woman, a pretty woman who had had at least one son, and clearly was in Fort Sumner at and around the time that Billy the Kid was, was recognized as being one of the women that either had interest in him or he may have had interest in. If Elbert Garcia is to be believed at the time of Billy's death in 1881, if he died then, Billy's got five kids. He doesn't say all five are with Abrana, but he doesn't say they're not. Four boys and a girl. My guess would be that probably more than one woman. Just, you know, knowing Billy's free spiritedness, etc. But yeah, if this woman was still alive when Paulita Maxwell was being interviewed for this big book, and if she was Billy the Kid's wife, and this was a, a, a commonly known fact around Fort Sumner by those that were still alive, and there were still people alive, plenty of them, at 1925. Why did this? Why was this not a bigger deal? Well, it's probably not a bigger deal because it's probably not true. I mean, that's just unfortunate, but I think that's the that's the fact. I I simply don't think that it's true that they were married. I think it's very likely they were a couple, intimate, but marriage, multiple children with one woman, Billy's living up in Santa Rosa, he's got a house there. Well, if he's living in Santa Rosa, why is Abrana still in Fort Sumner? Yeah, it's a lot of pieces that you have to put together, and none of them actually fit all that well which is unfortunate. I know what you want. You you want the you want this all to be in a neat tidy package. You want to to know that there was a wedding and you want to know what the what the vows were and you want to know it's not going to happen. I wasn't at the wedding. I didn't get any party favors. I didn't get to taste a piece of the cake. I didn't get to you know, throw rice at the happy bride and groom or, you know, whatever they did at weddings back then. And neither, neither were you. We weren't there and we're not going to know. But using deductive reasoning, we can figure a lot of these things out. The grandson of Jose Patrocinio, Elbert Garcia, was noted as saying, we all knew that Patrocinio was the son of Billy the Kid, but nobody ever talked about it outside the family to hide the fact that he was a kid of Billy the Kid. Hey, I have no doubts that, you know, that was probably not, as far as the family goes, that was probably not all universally uh, acclaimed and welcomed. There's lots of people that would not want to be related to an outlaw and might see it as a stain or an embarrassment on the family. So I could get that. But why would those people cover up the fact that Patrocinio was Billy the Kid's son? And if he was born in 1875, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Billy really had to, uh, had to want to make the number to get all the way to Fort Sumner and, you know, impregnate this woman and then get back to, you know, stealing laundry and butter and stuff and uh, killing Wendy Cahill. And if he was born in 1886, when I think he was born, because that's what it looks like, then he wasn't Billy's son. Abrana might have wanted to have Billy's son. She may have loved him. They may have been married. They may have been sweethearts. They may have been engaged. They may have been whatever. She may have wanted to have Billy's son, and she may have just told somebody, yeah. This, this boy is Billy's, but anybody that would look at the boy go, wait, he's two years old and Billy died seven years ago. How does that work? 
So probably not. And the uh, family tree that includes D. Levine and Maxwell is uh, pretty pretty clear, um, but it the, it's it's not uh, clear to the point where you would say, oh well, yeah, she's definitely she's definitely the mother of Abrana Garcia. So if you look on uh, this one website, daughter. Abran is the daughter of Barbancito, who sounds like, uh, I think, uh, I, I got to look this up. I think he was pretty famous Native American. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Barbancito was a Navajo political and spiritual leader and born near Canyon de Shea or de Shelley in 1820. So apparently that was Abrana Garcia's father, according to this anyway, even though he wasn't. But uh, yeah, so whoever did this has taken some liberties to include some famous people. So daughter of Barb and Cito and De Levine and Maxwell Jaramillo. Well, De Levine wasn't a Maxwell Jaramillo. She didn't marry Jose Jaramillo, Paulita did. Uh, she, uh, wife of Billy the Kid, mother of Jose, alleged son of Billy the Kid, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Occupation housewife. <laughs> and this was only updated April 26, 2022. Somebody's going to work on these things. Somebody's trying to make a case for themselves. Birth date, according to this, December 14th, 1854. Death, May 23rd, 32. If anybody knows where Abrana is uh, buried, if it is Fort Sumner, the New or Old Cemetery, I'd love to uh, find that out. And I've got some contacts I can call in on that. So we started off by talking about Billy the Kids Girls, and uh, we haven't proven or disproven that Abrana was one of Billy's girls. I think you could flip a coin and come up either way and be right, yes or no. But I think there's a very good chance that she was. Billy the Kid's wife, I think you could flip a coin and have it stand on edge. And that's about the only chance that you get that she was Billy the Kid's wife. And uh, mother of five kids of Billy the Kid, including Patrocinio? No. At least that's not what the evidence that I have says. So the pretty Abrana Garcia. The Bell of Lincoln, Paulita Maxwell, who's left? Well, next time, we'll have to come back and talk about Celsa Gutierrez and uh, all about her life and times and whether she was the uh, object of Billy's affections on that fateful night of 14 July, 1881, Fort Sumner, New Mexico Territory, when the world heard the last breath of Billy the Kid, or they didn't. <laughs> More to come on all that next time on All Things Billy. Thanks for listening. You take care of yourself. Bye.